Okay, hi everybody, my name is Ollie. I'm a junior doctor living and working in the NHS in England. Specifically, I'm a foundation year one uh, academic foundation doctor, and that's going to be important for the topic of this video, just to give you my perspective now. Now, you all notice that this is not my normal setup, and it's because I'm reacting to something that someone has sent me. Um, I feel like a bit of a Twitch streamer, to be honest, without the OnlyFans. But it's currently three in the morning uh, as I'm recording this. I'm adjusting my body clock to nights when I start my new job in a couple of days' time, and I've got little going on in the days between, so getting a jump start on adjusting my sleep cycle. And my colleague has sent me this, who is also on nights, um, article called Why Physician Associates Are Paid More Than Doctors in the UK. Um, thought it might be interesting fodder for a video. It's something that I get asked about a lot and I get asked about my feelings on physician associates a lot and my relationships with them so that's what we're going to be doing today please don't jump at me so before we jump into this I want to say that I haven't read this article yet so I don't know what's coming obviously you can see the website and the top of the article but what is my relationship and my feelings on physician associates well physician associates or physician assistants as the role is in the US the two roles are broadly similar are what's called a mid-level practitioner or an advanced practice provider the terms are fairly variable depending on what academic source you look at but they're a new healthcare role certainly to the UK that does a lot of similar roles to what a junior doctor does but is not an independent practitioner so works under the supervision of a consultant and essentially doesn't rotate so they're sort of like an SHO or a, a, an FY2 doctor that sort of grade that doesn't rotate around they stay with one department and keep and build their skills in one place so the idea is that they provide continuity of care in a department working with the same team and they build their skills and develop them in one area whereas your junior doctor is typically rotating around to get a very generalist early careers training program now what are my relationships with PAs like? Well, I've worked with two so far, um, only on my first job when I was working in surgery and they were amazing, really, really competent. Both of them absolutely wonderful, really good to work with, very knowledgeable, made my transition into being a junior doctor way easier than it would have been. Otherwise, it was a very difficult job to start on. Made my life a hell of a lot easier, and I'm sure they made the lives of the consultants and registrars a lot easier as well. And I do think that PAs have an important role to play within the NHS, because although I think the fact that doctors rotate is silly and not based on any sort of academic evidence and doesn't really do anything for anybody, that does leave a gap in continuity of care. And if you're not going to allow doctors to stop rotating, which it doesn't look like anybody is anytime soon, then... PAs do have a role, I think, in filling that gap. So let's actually jump into the article. Now, this website is called Goopy. It's not something that I'd heard of before, but it seems to be a sort of listicle edutainment type website targeted at the uh, the health profession. So we've got biochemistry, biomed, medicine, nursing, physician associates, etc. I've not come across this website before. I've got no real idea what the quality is like here or elsewhere on it. So let's just jump on to the title. Why physician associates are paid more than doctors in the UK? Well, we've not started off strong because physician associates are paid more than some doctors, um, many doctors in the UK, but probably not paid more than doctors on average. So I did actually get the two websites that we need to test this. So. A brand new PA starts on band 7 in most places, uh, which is band 7 Agenda for Change, which is the pay scale for most NHS staff. Now, with less than two years experience, a new PA will start on £40,057 a year. That's typically for a 37 and a half hour working week. So we're going to come across to the Junior Doctor 2016 contract, and we need to find out what that compares to. So an FY1, uh, like me, will start on 29,384. I think this has been updated for 2022, actually, because it was 28,808 the last time I looked at this. But that's FY1, so this is me right here now. FY2, that is second year in practice, to 34,000. And then CT1, CT2, so that's your third year um, out of medical school, assuming that you progress straight into training, which is by no means guaranteed, especially in the current climate, but then you would be on a comparable 40,257. Now, the elephant in the room here 
is that this number here and all of these numbers is for a 40 hour working week. Junior doctors work 48 hours a week and we receive additional payment for those eight hours a week on top of this base number. So practically speaking, we do earn more than this number. However, we do need to compare the standard working week of both in order to make a fair comparison, if you like. So coming back to our article, physician associates will be paid more than this one and this one. So F1s and F2s. And actually looking at this, they will earn more base salary than a CT1 and CT2. So that difference actually does continue into three or four years post-graduation. That's when the two diverge. But obviously once a doctor gets much further than that into training, the PA pay progression will slow down quite substantially, whereas doctors tend to be on a, a fairly structured set of pay increases. Now, the Physician Associate Programme is quickly gaining popularity in the UK. Yep, that seems to be true, uh, as it's being adopted in more and more places, with competition levels rivaling that of most medical programmes. Now, OK, we're really not off onto a strong start. This is one of those misleading statistical things that often gets bandied around with very competitive courses. What you have to remember about this is the two different pools of candidates. So. Let's say that at a given medical school, the competition ratio is 10 to 1. There are 10 places a year and they get 100 candidates for those 10 places. That would be a very small medical program, but just for the sake of comparison, that would give us a competition ratio of 10 to 1. If instead you had a PA program that was also uh, had 10 spots and it had 100 applicants, that would also give you a competition ratio of 10 to 1. What's very misleading about that comparison or what's not what's not seeing the whole picture is that there is a very different set of candidates who are applying for medical programs and who are applying for PA programs. They're usually at different life stages, different qualifications, and it often takes a lot more in practicality to get into the average medical program because the average medical candidate requires basically perfect grades especially at undergraduate level or very strong grades at the graduate level, lots of relevant work experience, a stellar CV at the graduate level, as well as performing very well on one of the standardized entrance tests for medical schools and ultimately the medical interview. And both of these are very difficult steps to get through and usually the main rate limiting steps. We're currently just not in a place where the same entry requirements apply to PA programs. Now that's no comment, obviously, on PA candidates and I'm sure that there are many PA candidates who would do very well in medical school and lots of medical school candidates who would do very well in PA school but the long and short of it is that you need to be much more competitive to get into a medical program than you do a PA program that's just how it is and it's mostly because of over competition to get into medical school but I'm really not a fan of this comparison and I think it's misleading people see the physician associate role as their way to contribute to healthcare Sure, that seems fairly unobjectionable. Practice medicine, I'm not sure I would necessarily agree that a PA practices medicine because they don't have a medical license, but that's maybe a more semantic difference. And secures a good career, all without the need to become a doctor. Um, yeah, I, I don't object to that last part. It is a good career, um, on paper, all without the need to become a doctor. Sure. Even though physician associates have less responsibilities than fully qualified practicing physicians, they often start on much higher salaries than doctors. I'm not sure here whether they mean fully qualified in terms of a consultant as someone who's being fully qualified or someone like myself, for example, who has a medical degree and is a qualified doctor. Um, virtually all physician associates have less responsibility than a new FY1 because of the regulatory problems, things like lack of being able to prescribe, order imaging and all of these things. And obviously those things are coming. I'm sure that PAs will have those rights in the next few years. We're not really sure when, but I know they are coming. But for now, even a new FY1 is asked to do more and cover things like on calls um, than a physician associate. One, physician associates often spend longer at university. I don't think that's true before we go into this. While medical degrees are among some of the longest undergraduate degrees any student can take, and um, that's correct, most medical degrees are five to six years depending on where you study, physician associates to a combination of degrees can lead to more university time than doctors. Okay, the physician associate will generally study a three-year biomedical science degree 
then do a two-year physician associate course and a further year of training on the job. Okay, so there's already things that are wrong with this. The physician associate will generally study, I mean, I don't know how common this is, a three-year biomedical science degree, but my understanding is, and I've, I've actually looked at this fairly recently for my research, that most PA programs require a life sciences degree that can actually be drawn from quite a wide pool of undergraduate degrees. That might be pharmacology, anatomy, radiography, zoology, biomedical sciences, biology. Like, there is huge variance in what people seem to be able to study at the undergraduate level, and that means that people are essentially an unknown quantity, or rather, you cannot assume what every person coming into a physician associate course does or doesn't know. The same is true for graduate entry medicine, right? Graduate entry medicine, four-year program, like the program that I did, is the shortest that you can do a medical degree. And you already have to have an undergraduate degree, and often that is in the life sciences. All that you really know about these pools of people is that they've done a degree before and they know how to study, and that's how they can deal with the intensity of these programs, but you can't make any assumptions about what any of these people do and don't know. So it sounds like they're trying to integrate this into the, the clinical training side of things a little bit, which I don't agree with. Then do a two-year physician associate course. Yes, so they're normally a master's degree or a diploma, and then a further one year of training on the job. I mean, when we're talking about pay, that's also a little bit disingenuous, because a PA is fully qualified as soon as they finish. You know, if they're going into a band seven role as newly qualified, that's not a training post, that's a qualified post. Um, and they're, they're being paid, as they should be, for being qualified. The same as, as with a junior doctor, you know, you're paying them, they are a qualified doctor. This brings the total time to five years at university, which is equivalent to the time that most undergraduate students spend in medical school. Sure, I think that's not massively sound reasoning, because the whole medical degree is clinical, or based around clinical applications, whereas only two years of the PA study are based around clinical application, or the role for which you are hiring them. They're both master's level qualifications, they're both level seven, so even if we were comparing like with like somehow, that's not a justification for paying PAs more than doctors. I don't really understand that. However, things like foundation courses, longer duration undergraduate degrees, part-time study, and of course complications might lengthen the route to becoming a PA. I mean, again, that, that just makes no sense as a as a justification. It might just be something that they're considering, but this applies to literally any degree ever, so I'm not I'm not really sure what the point is. Often PAs are more experienced and well-rounded practitioners by the time they become fully qualified due to this longer duration of time spent in academia. But we've just agreed here that which is equivalent to the time that most undergraduate students spend, and that's that's to suggest that most medical students don't intercalate or do additional degrees like there's a lot of nonsense going on here. And being a well-rounded practitioner, I would argue, comes from working, not from being in academia. And often PAs are more experienced. Well, they're not any more experienced in being a PA than a new junior doctor is in being a junior doctor. I'd, they're both freshly qualified. Of course, the medical route isn't purely undergraduate, and of course, some doctors could spend up to seven plus years in university just to get their license. Sure, I spent seven years in university, three years doing my science undergrad and then four years at medical school, but I'm not going to pretend that my undergrad has any bearing on how suitable I am or not to be a doctor, because the medical curriculum doesn't make any allowances for what degrees people have done before. You still have to be fully trained as a medical doctor, and I assume that PA programs are the same. They train them as PAs, not assuming a particular set of things before they go in, because we don't know what people have studied. It still, however, remains that generally physician associates are older, that's probably true, have spent more time at university than doctors. Again, no, I just don't think that's true. And as such, are viewed as more experienced with a lot to offer. I also don't agree with that. I think that's just made up. Section two, physician associates are under more pressure during their training. This seems like a controversial example to why PAs are paid more than doctors in their initial years, but there is justification. This had better be good, my friend, whatever you're about to say. 
while most medical students have five years to learn the contents of their degree, so that's correct, and essentially master medicine, that's very wrong because you're not mastering medicine in an undergraduate degree, physician associates only have two, but neither medical students or physician associate students are mastering medicine. Nobody's doing anything close to that. You're becoming a newly qualified practitioner. The people that have mastered medicine are very, very, very experienced consultants, probably at the end of their career. The point of a medical degree or a physician associate degree isn't to master medicine. That's just wrong. Physician associates only have two, but again, we're not comparing like with like here. A medical degree has a lot more in it than a physician associate degree. Oh, I think they've actually said that, to be fair. This puts an enormous stress on students on this course and can cause many individuals to break under the pressure. Um, I can't really comment on the pace of a PA program. I suspect that they are under very significant time pressure. It's a postgraduate program. So I'm not sure. I did an accelerated medical degree and the pace of that is absolutely breakneck. Um, maybe, relatively speaking, the PA curriculum is relatively similar for a PA student in terms of pace. It probably is. It can be argued that the contents of a medical degree and a PA master's cannot be compared. I mean, they can be compared, and since medical degree are slightly more detailed, it's not slight, my friend, and thus the average course difficulty is the same, or even more difficult for a medical degree. I'm not I'm not here to say that one is more difficult or not difficult than the other. The best analogy that I've ever heard for this is that both medical school and PA school are a sprint, where PA school is a two-mile sprint from beginning to end, and they've got to maintain pace all the way through to finish on time and get out the other end and start practicing. A medical degree, certainly an accelerated program, is a four-year sprint where you've got to keep the same pace all the way and go for four years, but on the way there you've got to explore every little cul-de-sac and side road on your way to the finish line, and that's, I think, a good analogy for the difference between the PA and medical curricula. It can also be argued that physician associates have largely already studied biomedical science related degrees which make the course content easier to digest. This may or may not be true. I'm sure for somebody who has already studied biomedical science a lot of the content will be familiar for somebody who hasn't done something like that, then they might find the content more difficult. That, I suppose, makes sense. These are all fair assumptions. I do not think that any of the assumptions that you've made here, my friend, are that fair. However, they take away from the difficulties and pressures placed on new physician associate students, and the fact that the workload intensity is definitely more than that of a medical degree. I don't think that's true, which at least gets gradually more intense rather than starts off tough. I get the feeling that this person has never attempted a medical degree or had a look at what a medical degree actually is. Now, hand on heart, I've obviously not tried to do a PA degree. However, I am very, very familiar with what is on the PA curriculum and what is on the medical school curriculum. And the PA curriculum is a very abridged version with the, the much more clinically relevant stuff of what is in a typical medical degree. And that's how and why it can be done in two years. That's okay. Three, physician associates make less mistakes. Junior doctors are sometimes a liability. I mean, I suppose that's true, just like any newly qualified practitioner, which is why they are very limited in what they can perform early on in their career. I don't really know. I mean, I'm, I'm limited in terms of a few things that I can't prescribe, which are more specialist, but those drugs and things would be done by specialists anyway. I'm not really sure what they mean by perform. I mean, I can't do surgery, for example, independently but you have to be a surgeon in order to do that, so I don't really understand the comparison. <laughs> the same goes for physician associates, so we've got some tiny shred of self-awareness starting to creep in here. However, because these healthcare professionals are usually older and more experienced in patient care, they better understand what procedures they're able to confidently do and what they aren't. I have literally no idea how this person has assumed that to be true, and I think it's it's one of the things that's beaten into you as you get through medical school and as you become a junior doctor is that it's so important to know what you can and can't handle and when to escalate to your seniors, such as the registrar or consultant. You are humbled constantly by how much you don't know and developing an awareness of how much you don't know and when to call for help. Um, 
That's certainly beaten into medical students. I have no idea how much it is or isn't expressed to PAs, but I would hope it's the same. PAs are also typically handling less complicated cases anyway, so by design they will make less mistakes. I think that's correct. That is what I understand to be the role of extenders to physician practice, like ANPs, like PAs. Um, they handle more routine cases that are more common and routine in the departments they work in. Obviously, they will be able to handle more as they become more and more experienced. But yes, I believe that this is generally supposed to be true. I'm not sure how true it is in practice. PAs are less autonomous than doctors and must report to a supervising physician, usually a consultant, which further decreases the number of mistakes that are allowed to be made. Um, I mean, junior doctors, FY1s and FY2s, and well, all doctors in training report to a supervising physician but yeah i agree there is a variable limit as to what you do or don't need to run by a senior i don't have to run everything that i do past a senior as an fy1 i can get on with stuff independently but whenever there's the slightest inkling of doubt about what i'm doing i know when to call for help and that gets less and less and less as you develop in your training. Physician associates are not trainees. Physician associates, upon graduating their two-year masters and completing their trainee year, are no longer students or trainee healthcare professionals. Yes, yeah, I guess. I don't really have an objection to that. Doctors, on the other hand, are considered in training for the first few years of them practicing medicine. Um, this is incorrect. We are considered in training until we are consultants, basically. Um, registrars, specialty trainees, um, they're basically considered in training either until you complete a training program so you become a GP or a consultant or you might do what's called a sort of trust grade role where you get so far through training so you might get to a sort of middle grade ST4, ST5 or whatever and then you decide that you're not going to train any further and that's where you're going to stop so I suppose you wouldn't be considered in training at that point but by and large anyone less than a consultant is considered in training. Depending on if they choose to specialise or not, this could be the standard two-year duration or much longer. I don't think this person understands how medical training works. As such, physician associates are expected to be full-fledged contributors to healthcare and their wage reflects this. This is, again, I think, just lack of awareness into how the real world works. Every person that works within the NHS is expected to be a fully-fledged contributor in whatever their role is. An FY1 is considered to work as an FY1, an FY2 is considered to work as an FY2 and contribute whatever it is that their job is to contribute. Same with PAs. That's not a justification for paying PAs more than doctors. That That's just completely nonsensical. Five, doctors aren't well compensated during training. Lastly, and potentially the main reason why PAs make more than doctors is that doctors aren't paid well in the first place. We've got to point five, and I think this is the first point that, <laughs> that they've made where this really hits the nail on the head. This is the answer why PAs earn more than, than certainly junior doctors, is that junior doctors are massively underpaid. We know this. In the first few years of a doctor's career, they are considered to be still in training, and as such, their salary is only a fraction of what they may make as a consultant later on in their careers. No, that's not why they're paid less. You were doing so well, author, momentarily. We're not paid less because we're considered to be in training. We're still qualified doctors, and that comes with all the responsibility of the role at the level in, at which we're practicing, which, I would add, is more than a, than a PA, certainly a newly qualified one. We have more responsibility, including doing nights, on calls, and being fully independently responsible for the things that we do. And I don't think they've done this intentionally, but justifying how well doctors are underpaid because their consultant earnings will be so much higher later on is not a good justification for how much you pay people at the beginning. You pay people for the job that they do and the responsibility that they have, not the responsibility that they will or won't have at some other point in their career. This is one of those frustrating examples that I hear about justifying PA pay for being what it is. Well, PAs are paid more at the beginning because they don't have the progression, but we don't pay any other career with lack of progression loads more money because they don't have progression. That's not how the world works, and that's not a good justification for paying anyone more money than the role that they do. That's not a, a jab at PAs at all. I think PAs are paid 
perfectly in accordance with their role and responsibility. Compared to physician associates who are not in training, doctors make less. Is this right? Maybe. Disagree, my friend. Physician associates nowadays do almost the same jobs as most junior doctors. I agree with that, actually. Day to day, the job that they do is mostly the same. I say that the workload of a junior doctor is more. We work more hours a week. We have to do things that the PAs can't do at the moment, things like prescribing, um, discharge medications, things like that, ordering scans and, and x-rays, which takes up a lot of time. With the, with the added benefits of offering more patients, more stable health care in a system where junior and locum doctors constantly rotate department. Agree. I think that that is the benefit that PAs offer to the healthcare system. The last thing that I want to say about that is I think that that gap in continuity partly only appears because junior doctors are forced to rotate and nobody has really been able to identify why it is that we rotate or what the academic benefits to that are. One assumes it's to make us better generalists. God, this has taken me 38 minutes to record going through this article. There's been a lot to say. At the risk of coming across as slightly rude, I don't think this person knows what they're talking about, or has at least maybe tried to have a conversation with a doctor or compare the two curricula or something, because it's just based on a lot of odd assumptions and lack of self if this person is a pa or a pa student i think they're displaying a worrying amount of sort of lack of self-awareness that's how i would describe what's going on here i don't think they really understand what the state of the of the role or, or education is in the grand scheme of things what do you think let me know down in the comments this really isn't supposed to be a pa bashing video and i, I wouldn't make a pa bashing video but when someone writes something like this why physician associates are paid more than doctors in the UK. And they do, to be fair, identify at the end that it's basically because junior doctors are massively underpaid. And I don't believe that PAs should be paid less than they are. I think that's stupid. Junior doctors should be paid more. And it's one of the things that people like myself, hopefully if I get my BMA role, um, we're going to be campaigning very hard to try and get us pay restoration. So let me know what you think. Take care, and I'll see you next time.